hola otra vez, aquí creo que es el vídeo número 3 eh, sobre las expresiones idiomáticas en español, idiomatic expressions in Spanish, and we are in, in the seas, okay, and we're going to talk about the verb conformarse, con. Con is the preposition that goes with this verb, okay? Prepositions, by the way, are just the little words that, that are tagged on to verbs, okay? That's a preposition. Okay, there are a lot of them in Spanish, but not as many as there are in English. Okay, so, conformarse con is to be, in English, it's uh, to be happy with, okay? Um, it's kind of to be an engraved, it's to be happy with, really, yeah. So this is how you use it, you say, ¿sabes? Bueno, esta noche me conformo con eh, una buena peli y unas palomitas. Okay? So, tonight, I'm happy with, but we would say I'll be happy with. We tend to use, when we use that um, future, Spanish often use present. So, tonight I'll be happy with um, a, a film and some popcorn. Esta noche me conformo con una buena peli, a good film, y unas palomitas de caramelo. Uh -huh. Okay? So, me conformo con. So, you can say, me conformo. I'm in agreement. I, 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 it's like, I'm in agreement, I'm happy with that. Or, no me conformo. I'm not happy with that. I'm not in agreement. Okay? Lo hago pero no, no me conformo. I'll, I'll do it, but I'm not happy about it. Okay? Conformarse. And then the next verb, which is costarte. O costarse. Costarte. It's the verb to cost. Okay? But they use it in a way to describe um, it's something being difficult. What Spanish speakers say is it costs me a lot to do it. It costs me a lot of effort. It costs me a lot of time. It costs me a lot of concentration, whatever. But that's how they say it's hard. Okay? It's hard. They can say, sabes, es muy duro. Okay, they can use that live really hard. That's a metaphor that, that seems to have traveled across the two languages. But the, they will also say, sabes, me cuesta mucho hacerlo. It's very hard for me to do. Me cuesta mucho hacerlo. Costar is irregular. The O becomes U-E, so it's cuesta. Cuesta. Me cuesta mucho. Or um, something like, sabes, he terminado el trabajo, pero como me ha costado. I finished the work, but boy, it's been hard for me. Okay? He terminado el trabajo, pero ¿Cómo me ha, costa, me ha costado? <laughs> okay, I'll come to that in a moment. ¿Cómo me ha costado? Boy, has that been hard. Okay? And then what they do is to make it even more, they, they, they will put a levels of how, how difficult it's been. Okay? And they will use parts of the body. Okay? They'll use parts of the body. Um, I, I've heard, me, me ha costado un ojo. Uh, it cost me an eye, but the very common one is me ha costado un huevo. Okay, it has cost me an egg, but obviously we know they're not referring to eggs; they're referring to testicles. So it was that hard. Yeah, the price was paid with a testicle. Okay, me ha costado un huevo hacerlo. <laughs> okay, but it's, they use that all the time. I'm sorry, but they do. Okay, if you're not comfortable with it, don't go to Spain. Now. All right, how we're doing, cool. This is an interesting one. This one is cumplir años, cumplir años, okay? I've noticed a lot, and I used to have this issue of, um, you know when we say, um, he's going to be 50 tomorrow, okay? He's going to be 50 tomorrow. I used to get all confused about, how would I say that? Va a tener un cumpleaños de 50 años mañana. I was like, wow, oh, it's too complex, yeah? So the nice, simple way of doing it is you just say, va a cumplir 
50 años mañana. ¿Ok? El jueves que viene voy a cumplir 50 años. Mm -hmm. ¿Ok? So, the truth. Este año yo voy a cumplir 50 años. I'm going to be 50 this year. So that's how you say it. A cumplir, ¿no? A cumplir. Cumplir años. ¿Ok? O mañana cumplo 50 años. You can use it in present. I'm completing 50 years tomorrow. ¿Ok? Ok. Here's another interesting one, which is um, the difference between darle a alguien un beso, give somebody a kiss, o besarle a alguien, kiss somebody. ¿Ok? Is there a difference? Indeed there is. The difference is this. Ok. Darle un beso is giving somebody a kiss of greeting, you know, saying hello. That's that kiss. Darle un beso. So, so a Spanish person might say, oh, hola, ¿qué tal? Dame un beso. Give me a kiss. Ok. Now, that is the between friends, but then in a relationship, the difference is, you would, they would say, besame. Ok. And so, besarle a alguien is to kiss them here, in a relationship. Ok. So, it's very different. So, you, the person wouldn't say, besame, unless they wanted a kiss on the lips. So, they would say, dame un beso. All right, so bear that in mind. If somebody says to you, dame un beso, they're not asking for a kiss on the lips. They want one on the cheeks, okay? Don't get confused, okay? <laughs> but if they say, besame, apasionadamente, that's very different, okay? <laughs> All right, how are we doing? Yeah, still got time. Next one, darse cuenta, darse cuenta, to give oneself account okay it means to realize to realize okay to realize something to give yourself account of something or i suppose we would say to take account of something it's to realize okay so how do you use it you say bueno me doy cuenta de que i realize that me doy cuenta de que o, oh, um, sí, me di cuenta de eso ayer. Me di cuenta de eso ayer. Me di cuenta de eso ayer. Okay, what that means is I realized that yesterday. So the dar becomes di because you're using it about yourself. It's a reflexive verb. Me di cuenta. I realized yesterday. I realized that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Or you could say, ¿No te diste cuenta? Didn't you realize? ¿No te diste cuenta de eso? Didn't you realize? Okay. So, ¿Me doy cuenta? I realize. ¿No me doy cuenta? I don't realize. Sounds strange, that. Okay. ¿Me di cuenta? I realized. ¿No me di cuenta? I didn't realize. Okay. Darse cuenta es una buen, un buen verbo. Ok. Um, dar miedo. Ok. Dar miedo. Ok. Now, miedo is fear. Ok. Um, so, what they do is they'll tend to say, if they want to say, I'm frightened of something, you can say, tengo miedo de eso. But also you can say, it gives me fear. Okay? Por ejemplo, eh, las arañas me dan miedo. Spiders make me frightened. So it's, it's kind of, really, it's make me frightened. That's how we say it. Rather than, I'm frightened of spiders, tengo miedo de las arañas. Las arañas me dan miedo, spiders make me frightened. Okay, so you're putting the blame on them. And only two right. Okay, so eh, me da miedo volar. So you can just bold on the verb there. Me da miedo volar. 
I'm frightened of flying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, me da miedo estar solo. I'm frightened of being alone. Or being alone makes me frightened. I suppose that's better, isn't it? And me da miedo volar. Flying makes me frightened. Okay. So, dar miedo. Interestingly, that so many, many students mix up the word miedo with mierda. Okay. And they say, tengo mierda. <laughs> tengo mierda de volar. Okay. Uh, obviously, mierda is poo. Um, but, you know, it's very understandable because I think miedo, fear, and mierda, poo, they're, they're, they're linked, aren't they? They're very much in the same family, aren't they? One goes with the other. <laughs> okay, but it's miedo, fear, mierda, poo. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll finish that one. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, hasta pronto. Adios.